So we just got back from California where we clearly lost our minds. Lindo, did you enjoy yourself? We just flew in from California and boy, are our arms tired. Is that what we're going for? I, 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 couldn't, know, I couldn't even keep it together. I almost turned off the mic and went home right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're watching the tech. This is a show that's on the internet in which I sit here and talk and Wendell sits behind the camera and talks. And that's pretty much it. Don't ex <laughs> Except for when I don't talk and then it's quiet. <laughs> but when you do talk, especially when I don't cut to, um, you know, don't cut to the screen or whatever. And it's just me sitting here like an idiot. That really makes people uncomfortable. Someday we'll fix the Canon 7D and then maybe I can make an appearance. But for now, I'll just pretend to be the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're very uncomfortable now. Speaking of being uncomfortable, let us take your money. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a new thing where we can take yeah. your money. <laughs> now, we're not going to take your money. Uh, what we're doing right now is we're working on the next version of the website, and uh, you've just started that already, right? Yes. Yeah, we, we're getting started. We're, we're going to redo the theme to be a little bit more organized. Yeah, so that's one thing we're doing. Uh, we're going to add tons of functionality. We're going to add some ability for you guys to get rid of people who are trolls without even having to bother us. You know, you can just, like press kill troll button or maybe we'll have a downvote system or something like that but in order to do that it's going to cost a bit of money because it's not just going to be Wendell and I uh, doing this we're going to employ some of uh, some of your employees and some maybe some graphic people and possibly get some help from from people on the forum as well so thank everybody who's been helping us out uh, but one of the things that you guys can do to help us is go join our mining team now Ritech has had a mining team for a while uh, we were with the BTC guild and uh, we we hit our 30 30 person limit like they've stopped they cut us off and they're like you guys are over the limit what, what's wrong with you so we put together something else plus they were taking like eight percent and i don't like that it's a little bit much so we've we've done something very interesting here if you go to techsyndicate.com forward slash bitcoin uh, you know and you want to join our, our team all you have to do here at the top is click this create a new worker button now you click that got to be logged in yep you got to be logged into the website so you know this is for tech syndicate members only if you're not a tech syndicate member you can't do it so it, it takes a second, and then it creates a worker for you. It gives you all the information you need. Uh, it, it'll create a, Your worker is just going to be tech syndicate underscore, and then whatever your username is. If you want to mine for me, just use mine, tech syndicate underscore Logan. And, uh, you know, if you're using a GUI miner, you can, you can check out these settings here. But you can just also head over to the, um, the Bitcoin forum. Rytech and all the team will be there to help you. I want to say thanks to a few guys. Of course, Rytech, thanks a lot, dude. Really helping out the community. Uh, We've uh, also got a Bitcoin tip jar address in the sidebar. So if you just want to send us Bitcoins and not mine for us, that's cool too. And if you want to learn about mining and mine on your own, that is totally fine. We're not here just to take your money. Uh, Commissar, thanks a lot for helping out with everything you've done. Uh, you know, getting me over there. Uh, Five Spaceman Spiff, what's up, dude? Uh, thanks for some of the coding. He did some of the coding on this, right? Yep, yep. He put together some of the stuff for the uh, the Bitcoin thing. So he helped with the, the code that automatically creates the worker. So props, massive props. Now, Pistol's hash rate's usually really high, and I can always tell when she's playing a game because it's zero. <laughs> <laughs> so I know she's up there playing a game right now. I wonder what she's playing. I don't know. I guess we'll find out later in the show. We have a new segment with Pistol called uh, What to Play, where she tells you what you should be playing. All right, let's talk about anything else that's going on in the world. Uh, speaking of Bitcoin... In Canada, now, um, Bitcoins are going to be uh, taxable. Well, how do you do that? Well, it's pretty much like a dividend. You know, you got to pay taxes on that whenever you buy and sell stock, and you get a bunch of money thrown into your account. Well, I don't see this as anything too insane, because I don't think they're talking about per transaction taxes yet. No. It's really like a capital gains tax. And so we have that here technically anyway. Yeah, and we're going to pay taxes on Bitcoins as well, but I guess they explicitly said, you know... Any form of income. Yeah. It's just that... With here, here with the capital gains thing, it doesn't count as income until we've converted it to dollars. So that's pretty much the same way it is in Canada. When you throw ten thousand, you know, Canadian dollars into your bank account, and they, even if they were from Bitcoins, you're gonna have to declare that. Yeah. So I don't see any big deal there. Some people are kind of freaking out about it. Oh no, I thought I could get away from taxes. Shut up, and pay your taxes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It was plenty of other things to complain about, like CISPA. Oh, it God. passed the house when when last we left this episode it was blah 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 but <laughs> well you know why it passed the house because pro cispa forces spent 140 times more lobbying than the opponents of cispa spent lobbying against it 
How much money was it? Like uh, half a billion? It was uh, 608 million. The pro CISPA lobbying groups. 605 groups, million. Or 605 million. Yeah. The pro CISPA lobbying groups spent like 605 million dollars. And I think I think like uh, almost 100 million of that or almost another 100 million was campaign contributions. But like one of the main leading guys, there's a website that has like how much money they got from what groups and it's just staggering. The amount of money they got to try to pass this thing was crazy. Now most of the money was spent in the House and that's why it passed in the House. It didn't pass in the Senate you know why? Well, of course, they're going to make a few changes to it. And the Obama administration had decided that they were going to veto it anyway. So they needed to make a few changes. What they're going to do is they're going to make it a little bit worse. So don't think it's all good. I saw someone on the top of Reddit like, yay, the Senate to the rescue. Dude. No. 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 No, the Senate wants more money. I'll tell you exactly what happened. The senators looked at that and said, wow, those guys in the House made a lot of money on this. How about we say no for now, make it worse, and then get some money? That's exactly what happened. <laughs> this is how the world works, you guys. So what, what's really going to happen with all this is it's going to push us even farther underground. There's several things that we're going to talk about in this episode uh, that are going to be technologies that are going to push us farther underground. And I say us as in the internet as a whole. Um, we're just going to have to, we're going to be a bunch of moles now. There's going to be the mole net. Well, the thing that kills me is that, you know, ostensibly our community, us and our community sort of know what we're talking about. I mean, it's, it's almost like we don't have our head up our ass, but our... You know, our facts are just as good as a politician's opinion, and that's got to stop. Now, when you see this kind of money floating around, we have to understand that, um, you know, the, all the pro CISPA stuff, what's really happening here is not that these people, you know, want us to be thrown in jail for things that we say online or et cetera, et cetera. They see profit. And right now, I guess all the stuff that, you know, that, they, that they're not allowed to do, all the stuff that's illegal, CISPA is going to make a lot of that legal, and they can make a lot of money. So if they're throwing money at things that are going to improve their bottom line. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's good or evil. If you're a corporation, most corporations want money. A lot of national defense contractors were also throwing in on this. And so they think there's, you know, good mo government money to be made from selling, you know, security things. Like the, whoever, like we've got the, these really expensive airport scanners. You know, how long before we have really expensive, like, packet scanners that cost $100 million that we need 5000 of? Now we'll talk about McAfee's um, patent on that in just a second. They, they patented some interesting uh, technology that kind of jumps in between you and what you're looking for, which irritates the hell out of me. Is that, is that the next on our list? No, it's PayPal. Now, PayPal has been uh, just traditionally against anything that's new and innovative and good and... I don't know, they seem to be against, like, I see them cutting off funds to, uh, you know, non-profits all the time, charity events, just, it, they're, they're ridiculous. Well, but right now, they're, they're cutting off um, a BitTorrent and VPN proxy service. Actually, it's, I wouldn't even classify it as a BitTorrent VPN. I just call it, it's a v VPN proxy service called um, a GT Guard. Yeah. What were you going to say? Yeah, well, I think that, you know, okay, like, PayPal has to deal with a lot of incredibly stupid people because a lot of people use it. And so on the one hand, you know, you could be like, oh, I bought this thing. I bought a bunch of Bitcoins. I didn't know what I was buying. And so you got to get the whole customer protection thing going on, which is bit, it bit me in the ass once. Yeah, you got to give them a little bit of leeway, but at the same time, they're also evil. So, yeah, they've just been shutting down everything. And I mean, GT Guard, they're small. They got 450 people and 90 percent of those people pay with PayPal. So the, the CEO, his name is Mike. He was just, like, floored by this. He was like, okay, well, there goes my income. I'm, now what am I going to do? Email all these people and tell them that they have to switch over to credit card or something else? Um, so it, it's really affecting a lot of people. And when you think about it, what he's doing is just providing a service that people are using. They may use it for, for, for BitTorrent, but that's not that's out of his hands. PayPal, A you VPN know, service is not, I mean, you really probably ought to be using a VPN service when you're on open Wi-Fi in hotels and Starbucks and things like that because those you cannot trust those networks. No, you, it's so easy for someone sitting in the same restaurant to just you know, steal uh, your information. Even you know, on the flight to California, I was doing the go-go in-flight thing. Not only my, were my ping times absolutely atrocious, but there was also a transparent proxy that was taking images and recompressing them. And so, like, animated GIFs, it was like, nope, can't have an animated GIF. I'm just going to take that away. <laughs> and it's like, what? And it's because it wasn't an encrypted non-VPN non connection. You want to hear a really funny story that has nothing to do with any of that, but has some in some <laughs> way similar? So I'm, I'm like in the hotel room. We got to meet Linus. He was cool as hell. Uh, and we got to meet Lou from Unbox Therapy. And you guys saw the pictures on Twitter if you guys follow Twitter and all that business. But this is really funny. I'm, I'm sitting there in my hotel room and like, you know, it costs 15 bucks to get on the, the hotel Wi-Fi. I'm like, ah, screw this. And I'm scrolling through the Wi-Fi list and I see uh, Linus Wi-Fi Plus. <laughs> I, was like, I was like wow that's it had like full strength too and i was like is he in the rooms this is creepy and i was like Linus, where are you? he's under the bed like playing around on the internet so I, I i 
I guess I jumped onto that Wi-Fi and it was completely open and no, no password. <laughs> and the next thing you know, I'm browsing a Seagate hard drive filled with stock photos of like koala bears and stuff. <laughs> and I was on for like three or four minutes and then just all of a sudden it was gone. <laughs> and then so I'm downstairs the next day and we're just talking about something and Linus mentions he's looking at this new Seagate Wi-Fi hard drive. And I was like, oh yeah, I saw that. Pictures of koalas and stuff. And he was like, you bastard. <laughs> you're, the, you're the one. I was, he was like, I was chilling. I was like, Wait a second, we've got multiple connections. <laughs> anyway, that's a funny story from California, but... Excellent. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> protect your Wi-Fi. I, I see he just plugged the thing in and it automatically came on, but yeah. Anyway, back to uh, GT Guard. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> is, that the name of the, is that the name of the Wi-Fi network? Hide your kids, hide your Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> and it's open. Uh, yeah. don't, don't join it. <laughs> So uh, where was I? Oh yeah, uh, PayPal's you know brands risk management development says that they do not uh, work with file sharing, BitTorrent, Usenet websites, similar services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's their comeback. Whatever. We need an alternative. Now let's talk about that McAfee draconian nonsense I was talking about. So McAfee has patented some technology uh, to detect and block pirated content. Now here's the way it works. Uh, you start off, you sit down at the website, you type in the URL, you type in your search. And before it goes and does all the search, um, McAfee, like an intermediate server or something, checks your traffic and reads it and then, you know, looks for keys. Like, are you looking for, I don't know, some hot new movie that came out or whatever, like, you know, Boobs and Explosions 17 from Hollywood. If you're looking for that, well, it's like, oh, he's, he's clearly searching for a, a copyrighted piece of material. And it will respond and send you, it'll show you like, sometimes it'll just say like, we're sorry, you can't get to this. It's like, you know, the Google thing when it's like this, this page has a virus, don't, don't go there. So sometimes it'll give you that. Sometimes what they'll do is when you try to click on pirated content, it'll say like, oh, we see you're trying to, you know, steal some stuff. Here are five websites that you can, you know, buy this junk on, you know, for free. I mean, buy it for free. Here are, here are five websites where you can buy this stuff. So you can, they'll give you alternatives, you know, so that you can buy the media. And in some cases, it'll actually let you click through. But they obviously know what you're doing. One thing that bothers me about this, I mean, besides the fact that they're sniffing your packets and watching what you do, which is really creepy, and you're, I mean, they're pretty much watching you without a warrant. Uh, but the thing that bothers me is what about all the false positives? What about all the stuff that seems like it may be copyrighted material, but it gets flagged with this? It's just going to make your experience, it's just going to kill your experience. And then on top of all that, it's going to slow your internet experience down because it's going to be looking through everything you do before it, you know, sends you to your final destination. Let's talk about some good news. Uh, there is a small ISP in Vermont that's rolling out their own $35 a month gigabit internet service. That is ridiculous. Now, I'm not sure how they can stay afloat with this price, uh, but this is this has come right after, you know, Google's done their Google Fiber and they're introducing it in various cities. And um, let, me, let me just talk about VTEL for just a second. Now, Vitel is based in Vermont. Not a lot of people in Vermont. Vitel's CEO, uh, Mitchell Geit, says that he wants to take the old infrastructure from Vitel. It's like from, from the 1890s, and it's like a phone infrastructure, and upgrade all of it to fiber. Now, he's a guy with vision. Let's take a look at a company like Time Warner. They've been complaining and whining and just crying like a pig on a spit because of Google Fiber and all that stuff. And, and, you know, they're talking about how expensive it is to upgrade because, you know, you've got to go buy these massive Cisco boxes, $20,000, $40,000. There's a lot of stuff. It's, it's not cost effective. And then they say that Google is losing money. And you know what? Google may be losing money, but they're in this for the long game. They're not thinking about, you know, three years. They're thinking about five, 10, 20 years out. America needs this infrastructure. We're going to require this infrastructure. It has to be done. Somebody's got to do it. And the company that does it first is going to be the company that benefits the most. Also, they're probably taking a bunch of ridiculously cheap hardware, ID, hard drives, who knows, throwing it all in a box and then slapping it together with amazing software. So that's, that's what exactly we're what they did with their server infrastructure. It's like, you think they're buying $20,000, you know, four-way Dell servers? No, they're buying the cheapest thing they can, sticking it in a rack and putting software on top of it. Yeah, have you it. seen some of their server rooms? It's like a bunch of hardware on a cardboard box. And they're just sliding out the cardboard boxes like, hey, look at all this stuff. And there's wires going everywhere. They're like, it works. Software is amazing. So companies like Time Warner, they do not have the vision. They also do not have the, the programming prowess to get this kind of stuff done. But it's going to take small guys, uh, you know, like like Vitel, and they're going to get it done because they've got the vision and the want to do it, and they, they love their, their small customer base. I mean, we're talking like thousands, not millions of customers here. Uh, the other thing that's interesting about this, and I want to bring this up, uh, the, the CEO went to Washington and said, hey, can we have some federal money to do this? You know, here's our plan, and they said no. Google Fiber comes out. And that's a big success. And everyone's talking about it. It's, it's newsworthy. He goes back to Washington and says, hey, can we have some federal grant money? He gets $94 million to do this. 
And guess what? He's fucking doing it. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to all those idiots who got federal money, uh, you know, from the 1996 Telecommunications Act that have done nothing. So, guys, just look for small companies like this. They are popping up around the country. Uh, it seems like there's a few of them in Vermont, not just VTEL, but uh, Vermont's also like the most progressive state in the entire country. There are some alternatives out there. If you have Time Warner and Comcast, there are alternatives. And a lot of times they're tiny companies that only have a few, uh, you know, a, f a few members right now, but, but just keep your eyes open. Anything to add to that? No, I mean, that's, that's basically what it is. And Google is not building out, you know, Cisco and Juniper high-end gear. Google, well, yeah. I mean, they probably are in some places. But in a lot of places, they're doing custom stuff. And their custom stuff is where they're, they're going to save huge amounts of infrastructure costs. I mean, the bottom line is, you know, we've got 10 gigabit cards right around. Like, getting a 10 gigabit network card now is 150 bucks. And a 10 gigabit backhaul will carry at least 10 gigabit customers. But the reality is it probably could carry 20 or 30 gigabit customers. So the costs of this infrastructure really are not what they were 10 years ago. And once you've got fiber, you're done. You just need to upgrade the electronics. And, you know, that's a 100-year infrastructure. So Mitchell Guide, VTEL, my hat's off to you guys. Um, must be nice up there. We need that everywhere in the country. I mean, honestly, put that man in charge of, you know, something so that he can get it done everywhere. But he only loves his local customers. I would imagine he would love any of his customers. But, you know, it's, it's local focus. Is, it's key. And, and as things get bigger, we're going to see uh, more of this sort of thing. It's almost like the blowback of... Well, blowback's a bad term for that. <laughs> almost like the... Uh, what, what, what am I looking for here? Uh, the um, natural organic The broadband... Response. Okay, put it another way. The broadband infrastructure in America is so bad that a search marketing company can roll out a better plan to provide broadband than companies that have been in the broadband business for longer than the other company has existed. And a, ti and a tiny little company in Vermont called Vitel can do the same. So that's, that's pretty insane. All right, let's just talk about this article quickly, and then we'll move on. But um, there's an article here on uh, Singularity Hub. I, I kind of like to watch what's going on on Singularity Hub. Singularity is a, a topic of interest to me. So uh, Jason Dorier, he says that robots will do everything... Uh, that we can do, but, you know, everything we can do now, only better. And he has an interesting graph here, so I wanted to talk about this for just a second. You can see here, as the uh, manufacturing output is going up, the manufacturing employment is going way down. We have uh, way more output than we did back in, like, World War II era. And the, like, the, the amount of people that it requires to manufacture all this stuff is, like, none. So... It's, it's, it's insane. <laughs> here's, here's, a, here's, a, here's a thought experiment for, uh, you know, ponder hour after the tech has gone off. What would happen if there was a breakthrough in robotics and software? Because I think we're almost there with robotics. Mm -hmm. To where that you had extremely generic assembly line robots and it displaced and supplanted a lot of the manufacturing jobs in China. The manufacturing comes back to America, but five guys can run you know, a, uh, a factory that has tens of thousands of robots versus a factory, you know, at Foxconn where there's a million employees. So jobs come back to America, but at the cost of, you know, a 10 to 1 ratio of jobs somewhere else. Now, I'm going to sound a bit of like a, a bit of a hippie here, but I'm going to liken this to something I heard on NPR oh, a couple of weeks ago. There was a, an article or a, a, I guess a story on the whole West Virginia coal mining thing and like, you know, the mining jobs... Um, there are fewer mining jobs than there used to be, and of course the mining jobs are bad for nature, but there's this mentality where, you know, they go in and they pull everything out of the ground and they just, you know, mine a bunch of stuff, and then they leave it alone and move on, and all those people are without a job. And the people they were interviewing had no idea what to do with their lives, because that, that was their life. And I think a lot of people get stuck because they know manufacturing, they, and, if, and if robots come in and take their job, they don't know what to do. And then there were a couple people on there that have, you know, have refocused on local stuff because right now, you know, they, they work a job and then you go to like a big box retailer and you buy your milk and your food and your tables and everything. But we're moving like back in time to a period when people start to farm again and they start to grow their own vegetables and make their own milk and they start to build tables again. Now we got guy you can go down the street from Randy and buy a table instead of going to the store. So I don't know, look at it in that sort of way. It's time to shift to a different way of life. Uh, because the robots are going to be taking care of all the stuff we didn't want to do in the first place. But remember, remember back in the day, we didn't want to go into work into a factory. That, that was bad, you know, talk, breathing, breathing in chemical smoke all day and that sort of thing. We can go back to that now, and the robots can take over the undesirable jobs. So yeah. think of it that way instead of we're losing jobs. No, now we can refocus. Well, it, it also means that jobs that have moved offshore will come back onshore, but mm. be much more technical 
Right. But, you know, that will probably lead to an economic revolution in its own right in China. Like, I don't think that we're going to have 100 million people out of a job in China. I just think that that will sort of fuel Amer uh, China's, like, own cultural revolution. Yeah, it's about time for a revolution, one about every 100 years or so. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, what, cultural what would, revolution. Yeah. There's no negative connotation there. Although, you know, in reality, maybe it would be. Yeah. Speaking of cultural revolutions, the Netflix CEO says that the future of television is going to be on the Internet and in apps. So I'm going to read a couple quotes from him here. Um, I mean, he's, he's mainly... Th this happens kind of suddenly with Netflix, and it was sort of a light bulb that went off when they made their show uh, House of Cards, and it was a huge success, and most publications called it the best show, not on TV, but also on TV. Uh, and now they're making several more shows. Uh, we're seeing, you know, I, I guess... The big companies are calling Netflix and Hulu and that sort of thing disruptors. But they're really forerunners for the newer technology. And the way things are going with YouTube, and we're going to see a more curated experience, I fear, on YouTube soon. Um, and, and YouTube is even putting some money into making their own programming. So who knows what's going to happen with that. But, I mean, you can go online and make your own television show. We've got really fancy cameras like the one we're using here. And I think that's really where the entire market is going to go. It's going to take a lot of the power away from the big players. And the people who create the platforms are going to be the new big players like Netflix and Hulu and, I don't know, whatever else there is out there. Are there well, any other big platforms that I'm missing? Well, okay. Amazon. Think, I would say think about it a different way. People have wanted a la carte cable pricing since the dawn of time. And we still don't have it because, right. you know, we're basically dealing with an oligopoly. Yeah, and then we had that Intel thing that they said a la carte. And then all of a sudden they're like, no, 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 no more a la carte. Yeah. So, well, that's, that's part of it as well. Yeah. And it's, it's going to be, you know, Hulu's got it down. It's like Hulu is somewhat pay for and somewhat free. And so you can sample it and be like, you know, I want this channel. This channel yeah. is a good channel. Something about Hulu that irritates me. I mean, I use Netflix and I mean, there's something about that. There's something about everything that irritates me. But I, I you know, I use the ones that, that work best for me and have the, the content that I want ultimately. But I'm not sure what it is about Hulu that irritates me. Well, Someone they, tell me what it is about Hulu that irritates they me. They charge you and still have commercials. That really irritates me. That might be what it is. It's like, can I pay $2 more and have no commercials? Because I'd really like to have no commercials. Our hero's back in the news, Lamar Smith. Oh, <laughs> you know, the no. Con the congressman behind SOPA, who was then made, uh, I guess, head of the science committee, and now he's chair of, what, what the House? Uh, yeah, what is he? Uh, yeah, the, the U.S. Um, chair of the House of the U.S. House of Representatives. So his, his latest and greatest, you're going to love this, he wants to remove peer review uh, from government-backed science projects, or from, from federal science research. Wow. So what you're telling me is that I have a perpetual motion machine. I can now get a government grant to, to carry out my research? Is that nope, what you're nope, saying? No peer review. <laughs> <laughs> now oh, remember, no. he, he was made like chair of the science committee or the... Uh, God, I can't even speak. He was made um, in charge. He was put in charge of like science in, in the United States of America based on the fact that when he was like a senior in high school... He made like a really awesome, sweet volcano. They're like, yeah, it's a pretty sweet volcano. We should make, oh, dude, we should make him chair the science thing. You know, it sounds like hyperbole, but it's really not. And if you look it up, and you'll see that it's really actually the case. And that's really sad and depressing. It's got to be frustrating for people that know what they're doing to look at what politicians are doing because they have such a poor understanding of so many things. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. It's, I'm laughing because I don't want to cry. <laughs> Lamar Smith. <laughs> we don't need peer review. What are you talking about? We don't need no stinking peer review. <laughs> My opinion is just as good as your science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some scientist shows up with a bunch of figures and he's like, oh, well, see here, based on all of our test results, uh, here is the sum. And the sum is whatever, 42 probably. And then he looks over and goes, well, that's just your opinion. I'm like, what? No, it's fact. We did a whole bunch of stuff. It's like, well, I'm a scientist <laughs> and they paid me a bunch of money to say this. So it's this. And, you know, I'm Dr. McNinja or whatever. So that's just great. There's going to be no more, um, you know, peer review. It's, that's wonderful. And that'll be a great thing for people who want to, you know, get money for bogus science ideas. Or, you know, maybe they want to use some terrible science that is dangerous for humanity. But uh, just, just do it. Yeah, we'll pass. The, yeah, do it. Whatever you need to do. These are the people running the country. I mean, like, for real. In the ground. These people are running the country. What? <laughs> <laughs> if we keep this up, people are going to ask us to, to uh, run for office. And then we're going to get shot. <laughs> Stop asking us to run for office. I don't want to get shot. I like my head very much without bullets in it. 
I, um, there, there was like the whole uh there i was watching something that was more entertaining than it should have been on c-span about like cervical cancer it was like an actual doctor was also a senator mm-hmm. like how did that happen and she was like no this is like a real thing we need to do this and and all the men were like no I, i've seen a vagina or two in my time i know how they work and she was just like oh my <laughs> god no you don't <laughs> let oh. me get my wrench yeah <laughs> like, i mean what are you I mean, doing i mean she like the c-span like when she was talking to the other senators like she was just appalled because she was like is that how you think things work because things don't work that way <laughs> Like, I'm a doctor, you're just some guy. Oh, uh, did you see, the other thing that's happening too is, like, the FBI, as straight-faced as possible, is saying (laughs) that websites that use SSL, it's making them harder to wiretap, and so we shouldn't do that anymore. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this up real quick, um, uh, what's, what's FBI, HTTPS? Basically. Yeah, it's Washington Post, indeed. (laughs) <laughs> yeah they want to find well there's there's also some yeah there's some legislation floating around right now where they're talking about how much they should find companies who are um, you know non-compliant but now they want to they want to find company they're going to find us because we have https is it on by default right now it is on by default so if you go to texanigga.com you're getting https so have fun running around in our in our safe little playground until the fbi comes and tries to shoot at us yeah they're basically no okay Okay, let's 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 run through what they're saying. Mm-hmm. They're saying that it is hard for them to spy on this traffic because it is encrypted. Now, what does that imply? That implies that they have access to the underlying connection. Like they can't they can't they can get to your ISP or they can get to your network connection, and that you know you read this article and they're like these ISPs aren't acting fast enough to give us access. That implies that if you have unencrypted traffic, they can see it right now immediately. Encrypt your damn websites if you're a webmaster, and then we'll just wait and see what happens. And that would be that would seem to the the fact that they have access to unencrypted data would seem to be consistent with all the other stuff that's happening and the whole AT and T retroactive immunity for wiretaps and blah blah blah. Yeah, let's talk about hardware, shall we? A few things going on in the hardware world. We got to play with some secret stuff out in California. Dun, 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 dun. Of course, everyone knows that Haswell is going to be out very soon. We may or may not have seen Haswell in the wild. And we did see uh, some of the future products coming out from various companies. <laughs> of course, I visited Corsair and Asus and a few other companies out there and got to see some of their products. There's a video on their brand new case that just came out like a couple days ago on the website. I, I got to see a couple of... Um, Corsair keyboards that are that are not out yet, and some motherboards from different companies that aren't out yet. But let's not talk about that right now. We'll talk about that in like a week or so when we're allowed to. No, it's like June second. June second? Yeah, we can't talk about any of that stuff until June second or after. Yeah, don't ask, guys. I'm I we're like actually we had to sign contracts and stuff, so don't ask. But yeah, I don't have no I, I can't even like I'm trying to keep a straight face because I don't want anyone to know how what I even thought of them. <laughs> That was a deer in head. That's not a straight face. That's a deer in headlights face. <laughs> oh, but I didn't give away too much. So only four companies are going to control pretty much all the fabrication for all the um, all the CPUs and semiconductors, etc. What am I looking for? Microchips, yes. Uh, we got Intel, Samsung, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing (TSMC) as they like to go by, and also Global Foundries, which does most of the AMD stuff. And the one of the CEOs, our main guys at Global Foundries, came out and said that he really wants to be the you know, the number one. You know, like truck going by well just wait the truck has lack of muffler yeah fix your muffler dude so anyway the uh, ceo at global foundry said that he wanted to be the number one microchip manufacturer um for i guess third parties you know making chips for everybody and they're working on 14 nanometer stuff they've got 20 nanometer stuff coming out soon so i mean that's going to benefit a lot of different companies not just amd because they're they're making chips for everybody but yeah, those four companies make pretty much everything. This is talking about processors, but I think that there are other there are other fab labs that are you know yesteryear's technology like DRAM fabricators yeah. and ASICs and things like that. And yeah, a so, lot of people out there making PCBs and stuff. Yeah, th- those people are still key players, but these people are making the processors, and that's what this article is really about: is looking at C- just CPUs. But there's still RAM and interface and blah blah blah. Yeah, I guess I should have prefaced it with that. But the CPUs are, that's really the heart, and and that's what moves for. That's what I guess. Moves you to the next generation. Yep. You know, because, I mean, this PCB here was not much without the, I guess, 65 nanometer. Is that a 65 nanometer part? I don't remember what this was. but it's Probably bigger than that. Really? 95 nanometer? I don't even know. But without the, you know, without the core, it's not much. 
It's just a PCB with some RAM attached to it and about a gazillion transistors. Speaking of a gazillion transistors, how about a billion transistors? One billion. Uh, there's probably more than that on this thing. 7970 graphics card is floating around. And uh, it's freaking 7990. fast. What did I say? 7970? S yeah. 7990, yeah. I must be getting tired. About time for a sandwich. Is that what you do when you're tired? Eat a sandwich? No. I don't sleep. I just eat a sandwich and keep going. Unsweetened iced tea. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, here it is in the wild, and the benchmarks are quite ridiculous. I don't think there'll be many of these out for review. They're $1,000, but they kind of kill the uh, the Titan. And one of the areas in which NVIDIA uh, usually beats AMD is uh, frame latency. So even if AMD is uh, faster as far as the FPS goes, it'll look your playback will look smoother uh, your gameplay will look smoother on an NVIDIA card. And it looks like they've fixed a lot of the, those issues with the AMD, um, well, even with some of the current cards, thanks to the new drivers. I've upgraded to 13.5 today. That's the beta, and it's it's decent. I mean, I haven't noticed any problems with the Atom. I'm going to play some uh, Bioshock because it improved performance by like 7%. Yeah, these these driver changes are huge and sweeping with the AMD drivers, and the, you know the next few weeks and months are going to see a lot more of the same kind of changes. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's worried about frame latency now, ever since like one reviewer stood up and was like, Hey, what about that? A lot of the, now everybody's doing it. Not all of it, but a lot of the frame latency stuff, I think, was also in dual GPU. From what I understand, was in dual GPU situations. And so a lot of that is, is being fixed right now, and it's a driver issue. Yeah, well, I mean, the 7990 um, is sort of a dual GPU on, on, on one PCB, and uh, there's a PLX chip to give them some extra PCI Express lanes. It's right there on board because it's got a ridiculous amount of PCI Express lanes. I think AMD said there's something like over 90 gigabytes per second, but that's I don't even see how that can even be possible. But even then, it's still an absurd number. Uh, go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, you know benchmarks and whatnot. If if you guys want to buy a thousand dollar card, go right ahead. Uh, more AMD news. They just announced the uh, two new processors. They've got a new quad core and a new six core, and they're faster than their current 6300 and 4300. It's the 4350 and the 6350. So you guys can check those out. There's like a 10% perform performance increase, and that's what they're saying. But the price, guys, the price is really ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to try these out, and if the price is, you know, the price to performance is good, I'll start recommending them for a lot of the budget gaming rigs. Uh, I mean, we're talking like 132 for the uh, six core. And 109 or no 122 for the uh, quad core. That is stupid cheap. I mean that, and the six core does a really good job in games. Um, as far as like performance for your dollar, it's about as good as it gets. We need a solid ITX board for these. AMD, we really, really need an ITX board, please. That would be nice. I'll a, play with a, it. a good ITX board, not like some crappy ITX board where you got to have external sound and external LAN and you know blah blah blah. Yeah, like a really nice one. Like the one that's in the Honey Badger over there, the Z77. It's the P8Z77 ID Lux. Yes. I love that thing. It's freaking wicked. We need that frame, D. We like may now. or may not have seen some new ITX motherboards. I'm like so scared <laughs> <laughs> over here. We must say nothing. Yeah. From And they, they may or may not be. No, you've already said too much. I, mean, I can't you say. Oh, you can't. <laughs> I'll just, all that's going to be bleeped out. All right, we're going to talk about science, but first we need to talk about Monsanto uh, and the Monsanto Protection Act because Senator Barbara Mikulski from, I guess she's, where's she from? Baltimore. She's one of the people who was beside, behind the Monsanto Protection Act. Now, this was sort of thrown into another law, um, and she's now saying sorry. About the read it. of the article was basically, oh, sorry, they snuck that in at the last second, and I didn't notice because, yeah. you know, I don't read laws that were passing. <laughs> and she's like, she was the one that was pushing this, and now she's not even behind it herself. She's, she's like, like, well, I'm not behind it. Oh, is that what that meant? Oops. And, and then if you if you look into the article a little bit more, it looks like she was almost backed into a corner, and she's like, listen, the politics, inside the politics, you don't understand how these things work, and I had to do it because, you know, I gave somebody a hand job, and then he did this, and then I was backed into a corner, and they said, if you don't do this, you're not going to be this and this, and we've got all this money in our back pocket, and we're going to shove it in your ears. Do you want that? Yeah, you want that, so you better... That's what it kind of sounded like to me. Ooh, look out. Is that what it sounded like to you kind of as well? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to get into Monsanto. I know there's a lot of our members who are very against Monsanto. I'm very against Monsanto publicly. I'll say that. Um, <laughs> I, I don't like what they're doing. They're killing all our freaking bees, man. <laughs> you know that scene in Office Space where the guy is with the bobs and he's talking about taking the spec and taking it to the engineers? It, it read mm. like she was that guy trying to explain, you know, what her job as a politician was. Well, I take the <laughs> specification and I give it to the engineers. So you don't understand. 
Well, Monsanto, if you don't know who they are, they make everything from aspartame. Do they make aspartame? It's like sweet and low or whatever. They make, um, people die in that factory, you know, they like bleed out of their ears and die. Yeah, I don't think. Their you, life expectancy is like four years if you're working in that factory. You need to not give Monsanto any excuse to sue. Yeah. Or, or give them immunity. That's the problem. Is that what they've done right now is they've basically made Monsanto immune. Even if they've, even if they're putting a pesticide or a drug or a chemical out on the markets that has not been fully tested, and someone gets sick and sues, they they're protected. That's the problem. So, and they're also killing off all our bees. And we did, we've done studies in the country like, wow, the bees are just dropping dead. Hmm, ever since we started using this Monsanto bee death chemical, <laughs> it's not really what it's called, but it's like you know a, a pesticide or an herbicide. And, and like the bees fly and they just drop dead. There's a class of pesticides. Yeah, but and people still are like, we don't know what's doing it. And like everyone's like, well, I stopped using this pesticide and the bees are alive. And then you know people watching like, oh, we still it's inconclusive. <laughs> there was a scientific study and they found a link and it was like, oh, well, we'll do another scientific study that was. That, and then Lamar Smith gets involved. Yeah, and it's like, no, well, no, those scientists got their degree like you know Fruit Loops you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but it was delicious. <laughs> Didn't learn much. <laughs> I had to send in 40 box tops for my degree. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the EU has banned the pesticide that's been causing all the bee deaths. Thank God, before we run out of trees. Because, you know, it's not just about bees. Maybe you're like, you know what, I don't like honey anyway. And, and screw honey, I use fructose corn syrup. That's fine. You can have fructose corn syrup. But do you like apples? Do you like a lot of different things that grow on trees? There are several varieties of plant that rely on the bees to pollinate them. <laughs> I mean, there's other things as well, but we need bees, guys. You know, massive props to everybody in Europe, but 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 basically, you know, the the European economy is collapsing, and they're like, hey, this is scientific study, and perhaps we shouldn't do this, and they did something before we did, and that's just sad and depressing, because like Germany and a handful of other countries are single handedly keeping the European economy alive, and they have enough time to figure this out and be like, maybe we shouldn't use these pesticides. Meanwhile, in America, it's like. <laughs> It's like, well, these guys that got their Fruit Loop University said it was okay, so it might be okay. And it's like, no, no, this is just no, subterfuge. Just watch Germany, see what they're doing. Watch Switzerland. What the hell? Just watch. Well, I mean, Switzerland's pretty much like. It's it's such. Okay, we're, we're Switzerland. Shut up, everybody. We're Switzerland. Leave us alone. We're doing our own thing, and it's working. It's an incredible amount of intellectual dishonesty, and it's just so disappointing. All right, science. Now, this is pretty cool. 34 different countries are getting together, and uh, we are building a gigantic facility in southern France. I think they're, they've been working on this for a while, but um, they're, they're going to be researching fusion. That's right, the power of the stars right here on Earth. This could be the clean energy solution for the next gazillion years. Now, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, it's going to take a lot of work, but it looks like there's going to be, I mean, it looks like they're, they're looking to have fusion on Earth, contained fusion that we can pull energy from, in the next like 20 years you got to take this with a grain of salt because about every five years since the 1970s um companies and individuals have been saying they made a fusion breakthrough and we're there now yeah i've ignored the headline because i i didn't see any you know i i didn't see i guess any reason for the for the author of this article to write the word breakthrough it's just basically a report on what's going on, but I, I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention because it's interesting to me. At, at the risk of opening myself up to a massive amount of emails from neckbeards, basically the reason that fusion works in the sun is because you've got the gravity well of the sun compressing everything into a very tight area. And that's the problem that we have on Earth is we, we end up spending a lot of energy comp trying to compress everything down to you know, that scale, and we end up wasting a lot of energy to get fusion to make that happen. Sort of like mining a Bitcoin. Yeah, a lot of energy is wasted to find the magical Bitcoin. Yeah. All right, let's talk about games. Oh, this is kind of funny. Have you seen this game here? Um, it's, it's the Game Dev Tycoon. It came out, and this is just funny. I saw this on Reddit. Uh, this is um, somebody who was making a game, and he took a screenshot. He said, so I tried out Game Dev Tycoon. It's damn realistic, and here's the reviews for his game. See all these things, and all the way at the bottom, you know, like a four or five, six, there's, you know, like bad scores. And all the way at the bottom here, we've got IGN giving it a nine with, it's okay. The developers did something ingenious. Now, they knew people were going to pirate this game. It's a low-cost game, and, you know, maybe not a AAA title, so they can't, they're not going to benefit from, like, you know, people going to Babbage's. Uh, it wouldn't GameStop. <laughs> what was it? Bad, which is going to the Sears and Roebuck to buy their copy. I think. <laughs> <laughs> they're just they're not going to be like, you know, they're not going to get like premium shelf space or whatever for this game. This so. is not even going to be in the Walmart budget aisle. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I doubt you'll see it there. So what they did was they released a version of it right before the the, the real version came out. They modified some code and then they leaked it to pirate websites themselves. 
So here's the funny part. If you're a pirate and you go online and download this game, it's impossible to win because your game is going to be plagued by piracy. And you'll get these notices, you know, like, like this one here. This is hilarious. It's a, it's a game development simulator. Yeah. And so you release your game in the simulator and it's like, oh, your game's being pirated. Here it says, boss, it seems that while many players play our new game, they steal it by downloading a cracked version rather than buying it, Ill- buying it legally. If players don't buy games they like, we will sooner or later go, go bankrupt. So that's that's on there. Um, and then there's actually some guys, you know, this is even funnier. This is an actual legitimate co- comment here. Someone who's, like, frustrated because they cannot beat the game. And they pirated it. They didn't go through legal channels to buy it. So they've got this pirated version here. And, and right here, he's just complaining because he, he's like, I, I can't beat this game. I can not I can barely sell, all, you know, I'm, all the reviews are 9 and 10. So I've, I've made a good game. And, and I can barely sell 100,000 units because 90% of the people are just pirating it and i keep getting these notifications and then he's like can't i research drm or something <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious and that guy was running a pirated version because the pirated version has way higher piracy rate in the game yeah yeah that's the way it works then you, buy, you buy the real game and piracy is not much of an issue well it's there but just not as bad yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to deal with it it's freaking and, hilarious. And that company just got a, a you know, it's I want to go buy the game just to support them because it's like, that's very clever. I mean, even if it's like seven or eight bucks, hell, I'll buy it. That's hilarious. Have you seen the Xbox 720 Illumin- Illumin Room? No. All right, well, you better fasten your seatbelt for this one. Illumin Room's too close to Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of interesting. Oh, there it is, yeah. This is the Xbox for the Bilderbergs. I'll turn this down in just a second. So what what they do here is you put like a little projector, um, it's like a projector hooked to your Kinect, and you put the projector on your coffee table or wherever you're going to mount it. It scans the room and it takes note of all the stuff like the furniture, the plants, and everything, and then it projects material around your television set that coincides with your game. Maybe it'll expand the game world, see like it's doing right now, or maybe it'll um, I don't know. There's just all kinds of ridiculous things you can do with it. Some people think it's gimmicky. Some people think it's silly. Some people think, you know, why, if you have a projector, why are you, you know, sitting there gaming in a, on a tiny screen with a projector that shoots images around it? Why don't you just use the projector? So I'm not sure what I think about it. It looks kind of interesting. I mean, it basically turns your entire room into an experience. The Illuma room. Okay, this article is interesting because uh, basically it, it talks a little bit about why Sony's moving to the x86 platform. You know, the new PS4 is basically going to be a custom-made CPU plus APU, mm-hmm. but there's no traditional RAM in the system. They're using GDDR5 8 for, gigabytes the, shared. Yeah, for the system RAM and the video RAM, so it is ludicrously fast. Developers complained a lot the last time because it was, you know, the cell processor was totally different. It's not what they're used to. I mean, Gabe Newell even came out and said the PS4 or PS3 was ridiculous, but he didn't want any of his Valve games on it, really, because he was like, it's not worth the development time that, and, and all the headaches. But it looks like there, it's going to be an easier process. Of course, it's still going to be... It's gonna, you know, there's still gonna be like a learning curve because we're not using all the same APIs. It's all different, but you know, who knows? 176 gigabytes per second. That bandwidth is ridiculous. Yeah, it looks like it could be an interesting platform. And being x86, I hope that it's hacked immediately so that we could have, you know, more, you know, PS4 media servers and things like that. Exploding Rabbit. Now these guys have, uh, they, they've just released a trailer for Super Mario Crossover 3. Now Super Mario Crossover is sort of like Super Mario Brothers. But they take all the different characters from Mario Brothers from all the different Mario Brothers games and put them into one game. And then they go a little bit farther. They take like Blaster Master and Simon from uh, Castlevania and you've got Mega Man and just all Link is in this. All these different characters and you're all running around in the Mario Brothers universe. It's it's kind of wild. I'm, I'm going to check this out for sure. I don't know how they're getting away with using all these copyrighted characters, but I mean, I don't think anyone's said anything yet. But that's, it's wild, man. Part of the reason they're getting away with it is because, you know, from that genre, eight Mega Man's only like eight pixels. Yeah. <laughs> white, blue, white, white, blue, blue. Blaster Master going on there. That's uh, pretty insane. And you get certain power-ups and it changes the levels. They must have done a lot of work on this. Like, you get a certain power-up and it changes it from, like, Mario Brothers 1 style to Mario Brothers 3 style to Castlevania style to Metroid style to, to Zelda style. Like, the entire world changes. It's pretty interesting to look at. <laughs> It, it would be a lot of fun to have a game like that that's American McGee's Alice meets mm-hmm. some of those old 8-bit classics. That'd be uh, kind of a... That'd be a mind... Well, I'm going to say it on the show. <laughs> that would hurt your mind. Yes. Uh, we've got some game deals. I'm just going to you know, let you guys check them out. They're in the you know, links in the description. There's a lot of really interesting game deals here. This is Gamers gate You can see Tomb, Tomb Raider's 28 bucks and Crisis 3 is on sale and uh, the Batman games are on sale. Dead Space is on sale. Um, 
there's a lot of sales there. That's on that uh, Steam, the Unreal Indie Bundle. Primal Carnage is part of that, and Primal Carnage is a really good game. So check all that out there. A bunch of games in the Unreal Indie Bundle that's going on right now on Steam. Gray Man Gaming. Um, all these are going to be in the description. So if you guys want some you know good deals on gaming, you can check them out down there. And, of course, we've got Game Fan Shop, and that's the one that we get a little bit of commission on, so it helps you guys get a good deal, helps us uh, make a couple dollars as well. Bioshock, uh, the sale has been doing so well that they've extended it all the way up until May 5th, uh, $44.99 for Bioshock. I think we sold, like, several hundred copies of that this month. It was pretty amazing. And then there are some amazing deals on good old games. Uh, Fahrenheit, if you guys have not played Fahrenheit, it's an interesting game worth a look. Very good story. Don't Starve looks interesting. Uh, the Odd World games, Gothic, a bunch of good games. Two Worlds was not very good, but it's on there as well. So I wanted to give you guys a heads up about some game deals. Anything else we should say before we close? This is a long episode, but we've been gone for a while, so we needed a good long episode. And we still have a regularly scheduled episode. Oh, yeah. This Friday. So we'll see you guys on Friday. Subscribe. It's down there. Um, and, uh, I don't know, send me a nice email about um, something. I don't know. Inbox at TechSyndicate.com. That was fun. Do we have anything else? I feel like we're leaving something out every time. Yeah, it feels like we left something out, but I don't know. There's so much stuff happening in the news, it's hard to cover it all. So this is the best we could do, and I'm sorry if it didn't fit your criteria for a good internet show, but you watched it all the way until here. Just saying. See you next time. Mitchell, Mitchell, Mickle, <laughs> Mickle. <laughs> the CEO, Mickle Guide, says that he Mitchell. wants to. Mitchell. What God a damn it, Mitchell. <laughs> Mitchell, <laughs> Mitchell Guide. With oh, confidence. See. Again, All from right. the diaphragm. <laughs> Mitchell Guide. <laughs> Let me go down, take. It's VTEL CEO, Mitchell. <laughs> like, <laughs> from <right>. the diaphragm. <laughs> In through the nose, Mitchell, Mitchell Guide. Guide. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because it's true. I wanna, yeah, I want to get him. Uh, I want to get um, Lewis Black and um, Neil deGrasse Tyson together in a room. It'll just be, you know, Neil. Uh, uh. <laughs> 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 That's yeah. what it'll be back and forth. Just in. Well, it's, you know, it's look, we're we're a couple of bozos on YouTube. Can you imagine if you had like you know your PhD in nuclear engineering and you see what politicians are up to every day? That I mean, poor guy just, must have a permanent headache. <laughs> you to be face palming so hard that you're going to need surgery. His next head's probably like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've lost an article.